So Leonardo AI has a new photo reel option that you can use when generating images with their image generator. But before I tried it out, I thought I'd try and get the most photorealistic image I could using some of the other features. I used a powerful athlete running on a track and I've got photorealistic shot with the DSLR camera. I even put a negative prompt of camera because I don't want a camera on there. And this is what I got using the Leonardo style of SDXL 0.9. I then was able to generate this one using absolute reality. And again, it's better, but not quite photorealistic. And for a bit of fun, I then moved on to Dream Shaper and I got this result, which still doesn't really do what I want it to do. So coming back to our image generator, I've got absolute reality selected. And this time I thought, I thought I'd try alchemy as well. And we're gonna go for photography. Now this is looking much closer, but still not quite 100%, but I definitely think it's a big step up. But now let's head over to photo real. By the way, I do believe this is a premium feature so I'm gonna turn photo reel on, which turns prompt magic off. There's a cinematic filter, creative or vibrant. Let's try one of each. And now check this out. Looking much more photo realistic. Even the numbers are actually pretty close, which is pretty good for AI. The generation is really quite clean and we've got that bokeh effect, which is kind of associated with DSLR photography. And this was using the cinematic preset. Now using the creative preset, we get a more vibrant looking picture. And again, the details are very well uh, sort of managed and everything looks really good. It has that bokeh effect and I think it's done a really great job. And now we have the vibrant preset, which has changed the character to a female or and it still looks pretty good. Much, much better than any of what we were able to get before. But finally, there's also a preset of none. And this, I think in many ways, actually looks the most photorealistic, but not as bright or colorful as some of the others. And it really showcases what's possible now with this new photo reel feature. Now keep in mind, photo reel is a part of alchemy. If I turn off alchemy, I lose photo reel. But uh, another thing we can do is test this out. Now, none of these have been upscaled. So if I take this first cinematic image here and I'm gonna run it through the alchemy smooth upscale and the alchemy crisp upscale so we can compare the original to these upscales as well. So I've opened up this image in Photoshop and this is the original, uh, but at the size of the upscales at one to one, this is the smooth, this is the crisp, which adds a little more detail. Let's zoom in. We can see here, if I zoom in on the face, crisp looks, crisp looks pretty good. I think smooth looks a bit better. The original is a little bit fuzzy, but overall the upscale has done a pretty good job and it does actually look a lot more photorealistic than what we've been able to generate. So let's put it to the test and see what we can create with this. Now, none of these images have been upscaled, but we've got here a woman's face, glamour model, professional portrait. This is the cinematic preset. This is the creative preset, the vibrant preset, and no preset. As you can see, they're exceptionally close to real photos. Like if you, at first glance, you wouldn't be able to tell the difference. The only thing, I noticed a few minor details in the eyes, but you've really got to be looking to notice them. Next, I've moved on to New York City streets, busy with people. And then again, this is the cinematic preset, the creative preset, the vibrant preset, and no preset. Now there's less blur in this, and there are a few details in the background if you really look for them but it really has captured a lot of the detail really well, and it does look like a photo. It's only when you start to look at the photo, the details of this particular image that you can see it falls apart, but there's a lot of detail for it to create. But heading on back, you will notice that under photo reel, there's also some options here for depth of field. So sticking with one of these, maybe we'll go with the cinematic preset. Let's go into these options. We've got depth of field, which allows you to sort of like have different levels of focus depending on how deep the image goes. We'll check that out in a minute. And raw mode, which takes away a lot of that opinionated nature. We'll come to that at the end because shorter prompts tend to work with raw mode turned off. So we'll experiment with that in a little bit. But for now, we're gonna go for depth of field from low to high to see the difference. Save. So this is the same prompt. As you can see, the subject has changed a little bit. We haven't got the woman in the foreground, but the depth of field, we can see how people are sharper in the foreground and it gets sort of blurrier the further back we go. But what happens if we try medium? And now this image has been done with the depth of blur set to medium. 
Now the blur does seem to be a lot closer to the subject. So I would say that possibly having this depth of field set to high gives you a sort of a less, more, more focus on far away areas. So if we head back, you'll notice the general image is much sharper. It just blurs further into the background. Whereas with the depth of field set to medium, the blur is much tighter. Now I've generated another with a depth of field set to low, and you can see we've got a few people that are sharp here, and then it also blurs a fair bit once you get past this first line of subjects. So it definitely does seem to control the focus. I would actually recommend experimenting with this when you're prompting, but I would say that if you want that really blurry background, set the depth of field to low. Otherwise, if you want that sort of a bit more detail, maybe set it to high. And that's purely based on what I've done here. I would continue to play with that and get a better understanding of it. This time I'm gonna turn on raw mode and I'm gonna leave my actual prompt still fairly short so that we can make some comparisons. Now this is with raw mode turned on using that short prompt and the picture is still pretty, pretty crisp, pretty good. But what if we want, if we want to take a bit more control of it, I'm going to actually add in a few keywords. So this time I've added New York City streets, busy with people, professional woman in the foreground, rainy weather, muted colors, neon signs on the buildings, lots of cars, add a blue tint. So I've gotten very descriptive. So let's see what we can get using raw mode. So as you can see, it's raining. We've got a professionally dressed woman in the foreground. We've got a blue tint, but also it's added a blue car. So it does follow that prompt pretty closely. But now that I've actually increased the size of that prompt, let's turn raw mode back off and see what we get. So by having raw mode off, I think this is a better looking image. It doesn't quite adhere to what I'm saying exactly. It's the focus is a bit out. It wasn't exactly what I'd imagined, but it also hasn't really ignored it either. So you can kind of play with those two and just sort of see, cause you get different results with each one. But uh, definitely again, worth playing with. And if you're someone who really likes to engineer your prompts, you can turn raw mode on. You could probably even set a seed so if you come down under advanced settings, you can use a fixed seed if you really want to control that image because you should get a similar generation each time and any adjustment you make will be what changes that image. But overall, I'm going to actually go through again, create a few more images, we'll do some comparisons and uh, go from there. But I highly recommend if you've got the paid plan, check that out. If not, if you haven't done the Alchemy trial yet, sign up for the Alchemy trial, have a play with Photoreal and see what results you can get. All the images I'm showing you right now were made in Leonardo AI with photo reel turned on. Very basic prompts. I don't like to over explain my prompts. I like to let the AI sort of do its creativity thing a little bit better. But uh, you can see the results are pretty stunning. And this is an exciting leap forward. I think these are probably some of the best photorealistic images you can get. Even if you compare them to mid journey, they're higher resolution and they just seem to be a little bit more closer to that photorealistic look in my opinion. But otherwise, thanks for watching the video. And if you like it, please consider giving it a like. I, uh, if you want more Leonardo AI tutorials, check out my channel. Otherwise, thanks for watching the video and have a great day.